So, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Uh, as I said, my name is Prithvi Raj, and I welcome you all. It's nice to see so many folks joining in for a chaos engineering session. We'll be talking about the Litmus Chaos project. It's a very popular CNCF project, and chaos engineering or chaos testing has been a very a uh, popular aspect that has been coming up uh, not in just in the CNCF space but also overall a lot of people are adopting chaos engineering so I hope uh, this talk is helpful to you all and again I'll, I'll just start by introducing myself so uh, you, as you can see uh, my name is Prithvi Raj I've been working in the chaos engineering space uh, since the last two and a half years, we started off with Maya data and then Chaos Native became a primary sponsor to Litmus and now Harness is a primary sponsor to Litmus Chaos. So I've been working in the communities for some time now. I've been organizing Kubernetes, Community Days, Bangalore, uh, Chennai and, and so many more events, Chaos Carnival. So it's all been about Chaos Engineering and feel free to reach out to me. On, on the socials if, if you are interested in chaos or, or something around community. So moving on, uh, let's, let's take a look at the agenda. We'll be talking about outages of course, and then we'll, we'll be uh, taking a closer look at chaos engineering, why, why chaos engineering and how, how you can get started with chaos engineering, why, why chaos engineering is important for you. We'll also take a closer look at running a chaos engineering game day and then Following by that, we'll, we'll just talk about a short case study on iFood, which is one of the adopters of Litmus. And lastly, how you can be a part of the community, how, how you can contribute to the community as well. So moving on, let's uh, just get started. So here is one outage that I have presented that, that recently happened with Meta, where Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp was down and reported thousands of outages. But then, you know, this is not just one outage. If you see my screen, here are examples of outages happening day in and day out, where you know large companies, large enterprises are having outages here and there every day now and then. And that is where you know scaling is not just the only issue. There are you know there, there's you know hardware issues. There's issues with you know uh, some sort of environment which uh, they are moving to, let's say we are moving from monoliths to microservices architectures and their issues are supposed to happen. And if, if you talk about Kubernetes itself, I mean, if I take the example of Kubernetes, then Kubernetes, uh, a Kubernetes application itself is in the form of a pyramid where your Kubernetes architecture is on the top, but there are other dependencies as well where you can see, or let's say your monitoring Prometheus, or you, let's say you can, you can see I mean, your platform layer or there are your, your other services, your MongoDB, Kafka running, and, and each and every layer can possibly have an outage. Each and every layer can go down, and you know, it's, it's just like the Murphy's Law, what, what is supposed to go down will go down. And, and why wait for an outage to happen? Why wait for something like this to come out as news or, you know, downtimes to cause losses in, in various forms? We'll, we'll be talking about them. To, to just you know follow follow some sort of uh, case where where a lot of companies are actually not moving to chaos testing because they are skeptical people are skeptical how to run such production failures maybe they don't have the budget and these are the things we are facing day in and day out being part of the part of the community and running the community for so long so moving on We'll, we'll see, I mean, as I said, these outages are avoidable and these brownouts are avoidable. Brownouts, as I, as I spoke about, I mean, scaling is, is a, another issue. I mean, Netflix started this concept around 2011-12, where they started off with uh, a single production level failure, where it was more about deleting your infrastructure in production or de deleting some, some pods in the Kubernetes aspect, and then it moved on with more production level failures and more failures. So this is something that outages can cause and or not adopting chaos can cause loss of customer confidence. There's loss of employee confidence and reduced stock price. As you can see, if, if you have seen the stock prices of Facebook over last one year due to multiple outages, I mean, that can be one possible reason. There may, may be other reasons as well, but here are such possible reasons. and if. If I take examples from real life, there are so many news applications, other applications which have faced such outages 
in, in the recent past causing various sort of losses for them. So obviously outages, as I mentioned, will still happen. And uh, these are some, I mean, companies facing frequent outages are not uh, looking at the chaos aspect. They, they have seen, I mean, more, 2x higher mean time to recovery. There are more team members who are required to avoid these outages. The operation costs are increasing. And obviously, there are many more damages with the major aspect, as I spoke about. We are moving infrastructures. We are moving from legacy systems to microservices, uh, cloud architectures, and, and such uh, sort of uh, outages are supposed to happen, are, are going to happen eventually, right? So if those who, are not, those who have decided not to make a choice, you are still making a choice, right? If you have decided not to adopt chaos, you are still making a choice. You are still deciding not to go ahead with this practice. So obviously this, this choice is something uh, which, I mean, by the end of this talk, I hope uh, you, you rethink. And let's uh, take a closer look at chaos engineering now. Uh, as, as I think you might have got a clear idea, chaos engineering is nothing. But inducing a fault deliberately into a system, it can be, I mean, a lot of people think it's just production level failures, but I'll tell you, in, if you are in your developer environment, in your pre-staging, staging environment, in your CI, CD pipelines, you can induce a fault anywhere. Uh, you can uh, target your infrastructure in a certain way to identify what sort of a possible outage might happen when, when the system goes into production or when a real life scenario happens and a simple example I'll take here. I mean, uh, in India, we have, uh, I'm coming from India, by the way, uh, in India, we have uh, uh, these uh, great Indian festival sales or Black Friday sales, as you can call them globally. And, and there's a uh, requirement for scaling there, there are a lot of users accessing these e-commerce applications at a particular point in time and the systems go down, there's a payment failure, there's a failure with the catalog, there's a failure with uh, the overall cart. And here, it's a very simple example where chaos engineering can come into play where, you know, such scenarios can be predicted beforehand by inducing such faults. If you talk about the Kubernetes ecosystem, then a simple fault can be a pod delete experiment or a, or a node kill or a container kill. These are some very simple experiments that are used by uh, that is used by the community in day-to-day -day life but as i as i mentioned again it's basically it's not breaking things on purpose as as a lot of people say but it's breaking things to mitigate the risks or to safeguard your systems so moving on how to start chaos engineering or what is the process of chaos engineering what are the four easy steps which i mean they are not so easy but I have just listed, down, listed them down in a few steps. So obviously you understand the steady state of your system, how your system is behaving while it's in the normal condition or what's the normal behavior of your system. And then you induce a fault as I took in a very simple example, a pod delete experiment. And what happens when uh, the fault is induced? If you talk about uh, the SRE terms or SRE practices, I mean, chaos engineering was seen as an SRE practice, but being part of the community for uh, some time now, it's also being shifted to developers. We'll talk about that later on. But if your SLO service level objectives are continued to be met, if your system is still resilient or the way you, uh, I mean, expected the system to behave after the fault was induced, if the system continues to behave in, 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 the, in a certain way, then of course your systems are resilient. But if no, there's a weakness found, there's a possible uh, I mean, vulnerability or requirement to mitigate that sort of an outage, then obviously you move back, you mitigate that, and then again, you continue this process where you again identify the steady state conditions and introduce a new fault. And I have, you know, I have created this, or this has been taken from the principles of chaos engineering. If you have already read them and you see uh, what I explained is explained properly here, how a chaos experiment or how Chaos engineering is run, you select a set of experiments, you hypothesize around it, what's your hypothesis, what are the faults that, have, are, that are supposed to be run in your system, and uh, how will the system behave uh, according to your hypothesis. You create an experimental group, and then you obviously experiment with those systems. I mean, the, the running your chaos experiments is just not about running it on your target applications, but it's also about setting particular intervals, creating 
द राइट के ऑस सिनारी और के ऑस सिनारी इज नथिंग बट मल्टीपल के ऑस एक्सपेरिमेंट्स रनिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू योर टेस्ट सूट वील वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट लेटर ऑन एज वेल एंड देन यू यूज योर लर्निंग्स टू बेसिकली आइडेंटिफाई योर हाउ योर सिस्टम इज बिहेविंग एंड देन यू यू कंटिन्यू द प्रोसेस इज गोज ऑन इन अ लूप सो दैट यू नो बिकॉज यू 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 हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इट्स दिस नॉट अ सिंगल पॉइंट एज यू ग्रो as you move ahead you have to understand what are the points where a failure is possible and and you continue to create new scenarios new chaos tests so moving on uh, where can chaos be used i mean as i mentioned it's not just about running it in production obviously our eventual goal is to run chaos engineering in production ensuring your production systems are resilient but you can run them anywhere your dev ci pipelines your staging environment your pre production again it depends on the chaos tools i mean there are a lot of tools it's the all started off with chaos monkey which is again an open source tool a lot of people use it for simple production failures and then there was the simian army there are there were new tools that came up gremlin chaos mesh and a lot of tools but the right tool for you helps you run chaos engineering in all all these environments so moving on we'll we'll introduce the right tool according to my perception but again there are so many tools out there being part of the open source community i would urge you to take a look at all the tools that are out there litmus chaos is one of them it's a cncf incubating project it started off it started off as a project to test another cncf project by the way open evs it's a it's a cloud native data project and uh, it started off to just curate some simple uh i mean database chaos and then it you know we started writing it and eventually it became uh, a project of its own and it's it's today one of the most popular chaos tools out there open source tools out there and it's uh having around 50 to 60 chaos experiments uh, i could have shown you the chaos hub maybe we'll we'll move on to that but it's it's driven driven by the principles of cloud native chaos where it's open source we have uh, a functionality called gitops where you know you can scale your experiments you can contribute you can write your own experiments there's there's so much we can do we'll we'll be talking about that but just taking a look at stats and it's it's adopted by the world today a lot of i mean even in japan a lot of folks have been using litmus we we, we have seen a lot of usage aws fis has a litmus integration there's there's so much more being being used by the community as you can see end users to cloud native projects have been using it and chaos engineering has exponentially grown i mean over the years uh, when you know people were skeptical today large not just large enterprises even the small enterprises are moving towards adoption of chaos and as you can see that's that's the exponential growth and maybe this is just a small map where the light purple ones are not using i i, I won't say the whole world is using chaos but the deep purple ones are are the ones the countries which have people or enterprises using chaos engineering so moving on uh, this is the dashboard I, i mean i don't have a lot of time to explain a lot of things or run a demo but this is the litmus chaos dashboard as you can see so this is the home page where you can see your chaos uh, i mean what are the projects that are running who, who you can invite your team members chaos engineering is not just Uh, a process for a, a for a single sre or a team member but it's a team wide process where sres qa engineers developers all come together to ensure your your systems are resilient and then there, there's the chaos hub i i'll take you through the chaos hub perhaps just give me a second yeah so if if you see this this is the open marketplace there there's only one project the collectmus that has the open marketplace where you can see the experiments that are contributed by the community i mean it's all started off with uh, kubernetes centric experiments and then uh, it i mean chaos engineering is required not just for kubernetes but non kubernetes environments as well there there's application level chaos in form of core dns cassandra kafka and then there's your cloud architectures aws gcp azure as well which which might require some form of chaos or which might require mitigation so this is something which the community has developed as of now but again uh, we we are moving ahead there there is the litmus sdk which helps you write your own, own experiment so if there's some chaos engineering experiment specific to your application then you can write them yourself and use them with with 
your application. So moving back to my presentation, we will we'll talk about a chaos engineering game day and eventually we will talk about a small case study. So a game day is nothing but gamifying the process, it is it's nothing but you know you running chaos experiments according to your application, understanding who the stakeholders are, understanding how your workloads are going to behave, you need to create a report and chaos engineering starts, I mean obviously it, it should start with building a culture, you need to understand the practices, you need to understand how chaos engineering works but once uh, the, the practices and the culture is adopted then you move on to running real experiments, running a game day, right? And these are some simple steps, In, initially you introduce the participants, it depends upon who is running chaos or where do you want to run chaos. Let's say it's in a developer environment, then maybe a QA engineer is coming to play. If it's being run on a production or pre-production environment, then maybe the SREs or the uh, de DevOps engineers come into play. And then if you are eventually wanting to run it into production, then your customer success engineers and, and so many more people come into to play to run, run chaos experiments. And then you describe your environment, let's say you're running it in a GKE or your uh, AKS, EKS clusters, you, you formalize that, your workloads are pretty important. I mean, for Kubernetes, you're running chaos on your pods or you're running it cluster-wide or you're running it on, on a specific workload, but then again, non-Kubernetes as well, they are, you are ha having your PVs and your stateful sets and so much more. And these are some steps, I, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of time to explain everything, but I, I hope everyone can take a picture of this so that they understand the real steps of running a game day. Everyone doesn't uh, really know how to run a game day, but this is what, you, as I had mentioned, observability aids, I mean, you're running, uh, you have to moni monitor where uh, the chaos is happening or where the systems are going down. And Dynatrace, uh, Prometheus, Grafana, people, folks are using, and eventually you, the last step is obviously to make the fixes, so make sure that post creating a report or once you have run the game day, you constantly run these game days according to the reports that you are creating. So quickly, I mean the typical way of doing chaos engineering as I said, the eventual goal is to automate these game days or automate the experiments. It, it usually was a manual process and uh, I mean developers run code gated code merge, uh, chaos gated code merges or integrated tests, but the SRE eventually runs an automated or a manual game day. So let's check out the iFood story, that's uh, the, the case study. iFood is uh, a, a food delivery app, just like Uber Eats in Japan, iFood is a popular delivery app in, in Brazil and it's been taking 60 million orders per day and it's similar to any food delivery app that you'll see out there. And the problem statement was that they were moving to that microservices arch architecture and they saw servers going down. Uh, I mean, their messaging brokers were crashing and the main issue arised on a Brazilian Valentine's Day in 2020 when they saw a major outage. And what did they try? I mean, they started off with circuit breakers and fallbacks where, you know, their major system went down and then their fallback system started running or you know, they stopped using the circuit uh, breaker methodology, they stopped these sort of outages or they curated uh, those sort of tests. But again, they had to understand that this is a larger uh, problem and this is not just about mitigating that fault at a particular moment. And that is where they, they moved on to chaos engineering. I mean, they started off with manually testing. Again, again chaos monkey was what they started off with. But they expand. They needed a, a, a set of experiments, right? They were expanding, and that that was the need of the R, and that is where they started running various chaos. Ex, uh, I mean, tools. As I mentioned, you need to run various chaos tools to understand your requirement, and then they were surprised by what uh, they, they saw with Litmus Chaos, where they were able to run a chaos engineering in a controlled and a simple way, and they were, in, uh, I mean, able to write their own experiments, and this is the architecture diagram where the chaos center, the, the one I, I just showed you, the, the UI of Litmus is connected with the clusters, the agents, and then they have a DEX uh, authentication provider and, and basically the agent is attacking the service or the application that, that they are running. So this is how they chose Litmus. I mean, there, there's so much more which is available on a blog. You can, you can check out uh, the, the CNCF blog and as next steps, they decided to create more experiments uh, create more permissions and work on the security and, and so much more 
that, that can be done in the chaos space, serverless chaos and application level chaos. So what's next for Litmus? It's 3.0. We are developing a new, a new UI. It's more robust, clean, and developer-centric. We are working on, on creating something special for the community, and you can wait perhaps for next KubeCon, and you will see what's, what's coming up. And uh, I mean, you can contribute to it as well. There's, there's uh, new features, bug fixes, charts, workflows that you can contribute to. You can be a part of the community. And to get involved in the community. There's the code, docs, Slack, Twitter, which, which you can join. So make sure, let's, let's connect after my talk, maybe. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I might not have time for Q&A because I'll have to stop. But uh, thank you so much. Once again, you can get involved in the community. And thank you. I'm part of Harness again. We are building Harness Chaos Engineering over Litmus Chaos itself. So feel free to reach out if you, if you have any questions or want to get started with the chaos engineering practice. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, awesome stuff. Um, I'm curious, it didn't seem very clear, so in terms of like ob observability, like as we're promoting chaos, I, I think I'm, I'm a little confused if there are integrations with this product to other um, observability options or if it conducts the observability itself. So it's, uh, it's chaos engineering integrated with observability products. So observability products are not inducing any sort of chaos. They are just helping you observe how your systems are behaving, uh, what's the normal behavior of your system, and when a fault is induced, uh, what sort of uh, you know, behavioral change, happen, change happens to your system. So you are pulling out the metrics, basically you're running chaos on, on these tools itself, Litmus Chaos, Chaos Mesh, or any other tool, and then you're using your observability tool to observe what's happening, let's say your Dynatrace or your Grafana dashboards where you are actually observing how the network is slowing down or how the system is going down and when there's a spike in the system, what exactly happens, how much time it's taking, that's, that's just the metrics that, that are important as part of your chaos. So it's a separate entity, you have to check your observability metrics. Yes, it like can on work the side. as a separate entity, although I mean with chaos engineering monitoring is obviously important. But it need not be a mandatory ent entity with, with chaos test okay. itself. So through the UI, we wouldn't be able to see exactly what's with going on. With the UI, you would be able to see. Oh. As I mentioned, there was an anal analytics section. So just a second. If you see here, there is an analytics section. So with the UI, there, there is some observability already which you can monitor. But uh, other than that, I mean, that's, that's just an inbuilt UI. But People usually the community use, uses other projects there. I mean, for logging, Elastic, Splunk, and for monitoring again, they pull out the Prometheus metrics. They visualize it on their Grafana dashboards, Dynatrace, or Datadog. Or there are so many platforms out there where, which which you can use to analyze. I mean, that's just expanding what what you are already using. Just chaos comes into play there. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? No? So, uh, I have a question. Uh, um, I understand chaos engineering is to break something on purpose. So, in that case, what kind of faults you can introduce, for example, uh, hardware fault or only software fault? See, see, chaos engineering is not just about software faults. It's about, multi as I spoke about, there's serverless chaos, there's application level chaos, there's, there's, there, there are multiple levels of chaos. There's VM, VMware chaos, bare metal chaos. So chaos engineering is expanding today. I mean, uh, the, we haven't worked on hardware chaos specifically. Mm -hmm. As a, as a community because uh, the, the cloud native world itself hasn't moved on to a lot of 
hardware level faults but but again chaos engineering as it expands maybe in five years from now you will see a lot of hardware giants i mean it's essential for everyone as i spoke about from airlines to banking to e-commerce to food delivery there's chaos required everywhere everyone is moving to chaos not just netflix today but this practice has moved on over the world but yeah hardware chaos maybe hopefully we'll we'll see that soon as well thank you All right, folks. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Okay. Oh, one more question. Uh, thank you for uh, your presentation. Uh, I have a question for the, the process on cows engineering. Uh, we are a uh, beginner uh, waterfall model. Uh, Development, development team, but uh, uh, you are introduced at Chaos Engineering and End Game. So End Game is uh, would be occurred on that uh, during that uh, end of that process, or on the agile environment. Maybe uh, we make that uh, um, uh, End Game um, sprint would be happen. So my question is that uh, uh, how often? Uh, Put the end game uh, during the development uh, time frame. So I want to know that that, that timing introduced that uh, uh, chaos engineering. That is my question. So, so as I had mentioned before, uh, a game day is not usually run at the beginning of the process. I mean, as as you mentioned that you are beginning with chaos engineering. So the first step is bringing the culture in, understanding the practice differentiating it with the existing testing practices that you already have mm. and then moving on to the practice of chaos where you initially understand your systems where chaos engineering is required where where are this you know the vulnerabilities involved in scaling or other failures that are usually happening and then once this culture is brought in you start with chaos testing itself not running a game day because game day is is a bigger process which is run not at the end of it, obviously at the end of it, the goal is to test. The, the goal is not just to run a game day because game day is more or less to understand your systems, but it, it's, it starts from the middle of your process where once this culture is brought in, once you have started running some tests in your staging or, or developer environments and understood the impact of chaos, understood what the journey is ahead, then you start off with a game day where initially a game day is just run to understand how the, how the game day works and then slowly, slowly you run multiple game days to basically create multiple reports on application behavior, what are the risks, what, what are the mitigation processes, how the stakeholders are affected and all these things come into place while you have moved certainly ahead in, in the process. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that, that answers. Yeah. Mm. Let me try. <laughs> it's about, yeah, but uh, yeah, we need to uh, make definition to create that uh, when uh, we try to do that uh, uh, cows engineering. See, as I mentioned, mm. uh, get started with the resources. Mm. So all the resources that are out there created by the community are really helpful for you to get started. And then you just pull up this platform, the litmus platform, and you run a basic chaos test on a, on a normal Kubernetes cluster, not even in your environment. You just pull up a Kubernetes cluster and you mm. just run a simple pod delete or, or certain experiments. Then you run a chaos scenario where multiple chaos experiments are run on the application. And then you move on to your application where you, uh, where you understand that these mm. chaos experiments are specific to my architecture. Let's say you are part of Vodafone. So how your, I mean, the telecommunication architecture or mobile application architecture requires chaos and then you start running a game day according according to your application. Yeah, we are doing that the country okay, uh, okay, uh, environment, so Kubernetes environment. So we try to do that as fast as the, uh, how to say, uh, infra le infrastructure level cows. Absolutely. That's that. Yes. That's great to know. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Mister. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, everyone.